The last thing actually is the, the cost of the trailer. The answer to the $64,000 question is... Hey y'all. I'm Autumn. And I'm Kimberly. And I'm James. And we're Camper Size Living. We travel full time in our RV all the way around the country. On our channel, you'll find RV related tours, upgrades, repairs, and adventures. Today, we're gonna check out this awesome cargo trailer conversion with Kevin, the man who created. Let's go. My name's Kevin and I'm from McCordsville, Indiana. Let's tell us a little bit about the rig. Let's just get into it. Now into the electrics. I actually had a pretty good time doing this. I took my time. I learned a lot in the process. So I'm gonna start with one of my 12 volt centers that I put in over on this wall by the door. First of all, I wanna point out, if you go to Will Prowse DIY Solar, he's got lots of YouTube videos on the type of wire to use crimping and stripping tools. Pretty much everything that you need to know, whether it's a small 12 volt wire, or if you've got four aught copper, okay. or any kind of copper for your solar project. He has a book, and I very highly recommend anybody doing a project like this to get his book. I learned a tremendous amount about um, a couple things that you should do to kind of calculate your usage. And that, that kind of starts off the whole process. So what I have here is a lot going on, right? right. <laughs> you know, I mentioned Look earlier, uh, you know, I haven't done anything with cabinetry yet, but um, uh, you know, the more you look at it, really the simpler it becomes to, to understand uh, what goes where right. this and is, why. This so. is a perfect opportunity to see a well laid out system, in my opinion, without all the walls and stuff in between you. It's almost like looking at a schematic, but it is the actual system. So pretty cool, let's check this out. The first challenge I had was, how am I gonna mount my 12 volt switch plate? I'm not very good at woodworking. Right, <laughs> I'm right. I'm just not. You'll see, you know, panels like this or other panels in the trailer here. And if I can make a straight cut, I'm good with that, but it doesn't get, you know, it can't get any more difficult than that. Right. So this particular box, it happens to be an IP66 rated box, which is outdoor waterproof. And I thought at first it was gonna be just too big, but it worked out perfect. Now you'll have to go to their website, but this is manufactured by Hammond Manufacturing. And I think the series is a polyline. And I uh, forget the dimensions of this one, but they've got very detailed dimensions on all their boxes. So once I put this in, I was very thankful and I'll show you why when I open this up. I put in a, uh, a 12 volt switch center. This particular voltmeter was already there. I went ahead and added this one, which is again, another quick charge 3.0. Um, in hindsight, I didn't need the meter. Okay. And then of course, uh, you know, just another round uh, 12 volt plug. Right. Okay. So I have four lights in the ceiling. Just it like your standard, like you'd have in an RV. Yeah. And um, kind of a flush mount. They almost. of course draw very little, but right. um, I had them wire onto uh, the wall. LED, right? Yes, exactly. Okay. I had them wire onto the wall a couple of switches that I uh, took off when I when I put this in, but I've got two lights for the front and two for the rear. So this is your light switches here. Yeah, and then um, I Can do I? have my Max Air fan switched. Uh, the porch light, which is um, you covered that in the first part where I've got a cargo, basically it's right. a cargo light above my uh, door here. Mm -hmm. And then my cameras, turn on some of these. Uh... How long does this hold the footage for then? So this particular DVR, if you just look, um, look up mobile DVR on Amazon, you can find these and they come in kits as well. With two 256 megabyte cards, I believe is what I have in it. You can record before it starts re-recording over itself, I think about uh, 10, 12 days, something like that. A few of the gadgets I decided to install, and you can do whatever you want, uh, but I thought I would first start off with a camera system with a DVR. This is an XM radio I've had since 2007. Okay. So it's been around the block. It still works, thankfully. Once, right. it, once it fails, I lose my radio ID, unfortunately. Uh, uh. Um, on the side of the box over here, you can see that I put in um, uh, two electrical outlets. Right. So I put in you know one uh, double gang box there for the sound system. And I, I know people are going to ask about this. Looks like a microphone. Yeah. So that's a microphone that 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 came with uh, the head unit. Okay. I I found myself um, uh, on a, on one occasion with my phone in my hand. I was trying to uh, 
receive a phone call, nobody could hear me. The head unit was automatically picking up the audio from my phone call. Right, 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 right. So I'm like, okay, in case that happens again, I might as well just put the microphone in there. So essentially you have a Bluetooth hands-free phone system in here like you would have in your car. Yes, exactly. Okay. Uh, now, this particular one is, uh, is a marine head unit. And the reason I decided to go with that one is because they have larger amplifiers. If you go with uh, a head unit that's for your car, uh, they tend to have amplifiers that are much, much smaller because they want to sell you a preamp and all that right, kind of right, stuff, right? right? Uh, I decided then for my base that I would put in, and this is made by a company called Rockville. That's basically just a subwoofer that goes okay. underneath your seat. So it was pretty Space easy to saving. install. Yes, exactly. All right. And, uh, you know, I really don't crank anything <laughs> right. in here, but as you can see, I put in, uh, I have two, I think six and a quarter speakers uh, up front here, and then I've got two in the back as well. Okay, so I want to show you how I laid this out on the inside. This is my, uh, my primary 12 volt blue C uh, breaker. You can see that looks like speaker, speaker wire. wire, right? Right. Well, it's not ordinary speaker wire. That just happens to be the look of the sheathing that they used. That's 100% huh. copper because I'm running devices off of it, okay? okay? Anytime you have, you know, a switch plate like this, you're gonna come off of this to power it. You got uh, some things labeled there, porch light, rear socket, and so forth. It was a little tough with the label maker. I had to put scotch tape over them. I haven't found a good way yet. But anyway, right. this is one of my two 12 volt centers that I put in. I've got my uh, Victron battery monitor up top here. At the bottom is the control panel for my uh, Ames inverter. All righty. And then in case you need them, that's a good thing to document your uh, battery settings. Those come directly from Battleborn. I just basically taped it on the inside there. So that's All something right. they already had printed up. Yeah, I just copied and pasted it okay. and then, uh, and then uh, printed it out. My XM radio takes six volt. So I took the adapter, plugs into your um, right. your, your 12 volt socket. Mm -hmm. I took it apart and I, I hardwired it because this is the circuitry to take it from 12 to six volt. Right. So right, I had right. to keep that. Okay. Yeah. You saw earlier, I've got a, one fire extinguisher in the back. Uh, even though it's a small trailer, I'm thinking about putting a smaller one up front, just, you know, just in store. case. Right. right, exactly. So that uh, I have quick access to either side of the trailer to get one if I need it. Sure. Related to that, First Alert makes a combination uh, smoke detector and carbon monoxide detector. It's super important not only to have the smoke detector, but also have that carbon monoxide that can kill just as many people as a fire leaving a propane on or some other malfunction in your heater or something like that can yeah and while you're uh going that direction there so this is my other my other 12 volt center okay half of those are for future use i've got them running to you know other other parts of the trailer a couple so, underneath here so basically you've got extra wires run to support other 12 volt items you might want to that i later. think i might need later right okay yeah so it's good when idea. i uh, eventually, although I really like my whale pump, <laughs> right. um, eventually when I go away from this water system, then I've got the 12 volt, you know, already plumbed in down there, there you to, go. to, you know, go with the water pump and things yeah. like that. So. You may never want to do that though. That thing works I good. I might not. I'm really, I'm really liking it. Yeah. yeah. I use so little water. So. Yeah. I could see like, if you wanted to do like an on-demand hot water heater, you might want to pump. Mm -hmm. because you got to have that certain flow to get it. But mm -hmm. I don't know if you're planning on going that big even, so. Can we take a look then at the yeah, the main brain here? The sure, absolutely. So I put in the uh, the 30 amp uh, socket on, on the outside. Right. And I explained earlier where on uh, this side of the trailer, I took out the airline track. Uh huh. And that gave me the perfect pathway right. to run my cable from my uh, my 30 amp outlet. That really does work good. Yeah. Now, this type of cable here, it's called SOOW. It has a very thick uh, cover or sheathing around it. You do need to be really careful when you're, when you're stripping the sheathing off of this particular cable. A lot of other copper cable that you use for your solar project, it'll have a paper lining on the inside. You can actually hear it as you cut it. That way you know that you've gone through, you know, the, the sheathing part of it. Right. And it's a little easier. This one, not so much, but it's a really heavy duty sheathing. And so basically I, I brought it in and this runs all the way to the front. So it kind of goes under the- Yeah, so it goes- Tower of the fridge. appliances here. 
it terminates right underneath this uh, aqua tanner. It terminates. Yeah, so it stops. So you're saying the channel that was already down here stops under where your aqua tanners are. Right, and then okay. I, I utilized a router to then route a pathway into the floor. Okay. Since it's three quarter, I had to be really careful, obviously. <laughs> right, right. But uh, the bit on the router was walking on me just a little bit. But in any case, um, that looks uh, so great, I put though. down, yeah, I put down the straight edge on you know these these two runs here. I mean, this is awesome because it makes it flush to the ground. But if you didn't have a track in place, probably you could go ahead and just pin it pin it up against the wall. That's probably what most people would do. Right, exactly. But Kevin is like to the nth detail. So that's what's so fascinating about this build to me. Not not even just the details he's put into it, but the details that he knows about it. So then that cord comes all the way under. And yeah, to, and then it goes to my uh, uh, electrical management system. I think everybody knows there's a variety of them out there that you can get. I decided to go with a hardwired unit and this particular cable worked out really well. So I mounted the box here. The, uh, the panel for it is here which allows you to select normal use. Under normal use, then you've got, if you run into a problem at uh, you know an RV park or what have you, then uh, you've got some error codes also listed on the front of the box as well, just so you can identify what it is. Oh, good, yeah. yeah. So currently, just as an example, I've only had one RV park visit so far. It was perfect. And what this will do is basically tell you, you know, how many Hertz that your supply is how many volts are coming in and it'll tell you if there's any error codes or not okay so uh now for my generator i just have a small uh you know 2200 watt on occasion i don't use it too much when i do generators they they don't really have a ground that this box will sense so okay. it'll throw out on normal use it'll throw out an error code and it won't allow the power in in that case, all you have to do is just uh, set it on uh, bypass the EMS and then the power will come through. Coming out of your electrical management system, I have this cable going over and into the end of the inverter. Okay. And then also back out. And then back out there and down this way. And then um, I'll show you after we're done with this, what I did with my electrical box, my breaker center basically for okay. my AC. This one goes up into the panel that's on the wall in the center of the um, the countertop here. Right up to there. Yeah. And that's basically so that's a, a, it's another, it's a blue, it's a blue C product. And uh, it's got, it's pre-wired. It's got the breakers already built in. Yeah. And I, I really, really like that option. It's kind of pricey, but that's compared to going to a big box store and getting these big giant gray boxes you know what right. i mean yeah and i'm like i just i'm just not feeling it <laughs> yeah definitely looks better than sort of the household version that they normally would have uh, we'll talk about that okay. uh, a little bit more all right uh, so now for the uh the battery part of it from the battery switch i took the uh positive here and the negative here from the negative bus bar up okay. to the inverter so the negative here yeah to the negative bus bar and then up to the inverter and this particular inverter it's an ames 2500 it is an inverter charger and it does support lithium so you just need to make sure that your inverter or inverter charger depending on how you want to go with that does support lithium these are the two positives then that come over to my breakers for my two 12 volt um blue c centers okay right the ones you showed that us were, before on each side over to the wall yeah okay and all these cables are going through the nose of the trailer <laughs> and up yeah you can kind of see it's got them neatly tucked in there it's just beautiful so here's a question i had that i was looking at what is this big breaker right here for so i have i have three 250 watt panels wired in parallel on the roof of the trailer okay now we're on the rooftop uh, again, I have three 250 watt panels. I did purchase these from uh, Santan Solar here in Arizona. I fashioned my own brackets such that I can tilt them. Here in Arizona on this trip, uh, I tilted them for the first time and out of the potential 750 watt capacity, uh, one day I was bringing in 710 watts. And they do have used panels available and that's exactly what these are. So this is just strictly 
nothing but a disconnect switch. Okay. What is that, a 30 amp? Oh, uh, not sure. I have to look it's at it. It's too small. Amp. I can't see yeah. it, even with my glasses. <laughs> <laughs> this wire here on the bottom is coming in from the solar panels. Yeah, so this wire here is from all three of my solar panels. Okay. Comes in, and then it comes out, and then goes to my um, Victron uh, charge controller. All right. If I have to work on the system, I can just disconnect it here. And I have inline fuses for each panel that are fastened up, behind each, each of the panels. Up the on the roof. Right. Okay. Yeah, so that's the protect that's where I have the protection for the uh for the uh the solar. The okay. So what's the white? That's the other one from the solar panel? Yeah, that's the um, negative. Okay. Yeah. So the white comes around here and up there, and then your power from the controller. From the charge controller, uh, I've got the positive coming out to a breaker. Right. The one that was provided to me, um, I, there's a lot of stuff I have in here made in China, but it kept tripping prematurely and I could not identify the problem at all. Right. Busman. The Busman is the brand that you want to use here because this is awfully critical. You've, you've changed. This yeah. is not the China one. You got rid That's of that That's correct. One. What you want to do is have a breaker that is matched with your charge controller, which in this case is uh, 50 amp. So what amp is that breaker then? 60? Yeah, so that's 60. Okay. So the positive basically just comes back out of the solar charge controller back to the bus bar. Right. And it just goes down. And back to the batteries. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then the negative comes, that goes behind the bus bar, right? Yeah. That's so I, how, just, I just or, have that wired behind the switch yeah. and that comes to the negative bus bar. And then down to the battery. Yeah. The basic idea of using bus bars is so that you can eliminate the terminations. Right. The terminations meaning all the ends that you have to put on cables as opposed to this. I can have a bus where I have, you know, basically everybody's seen them out there. They're kind of like this. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like my shunt, but uh, in any case, but it's a bus bar. You just, you know, bolt it directly to it and it has a bunch of bolts already on it. It comes with the hardware. You just, you know, screw them down. The other thing too is this is a good example here with a bus bar. I can have two negatives coming into um, my bus bar and it's captured by the same fastener here. So I do have a question about this now. So you've got exposed places where if I don't know, say you've got a, a metal rack or something that something metal that gets laid in here, maybe a camp chair or something. Is there a risk of it um, like arcing across any of this or do you have plans to cabinet this in? Well, because I know you hadn't you hadn't done any of your cabinets yet. Right. So it, under the right conditions, anything like that can happen. Right. Right. <laughs> so I make sure that everything in this trailer is fastened down. Right. I carry two tubs here. Um, these are made by Husky. Mm -hmm. I really like these. They're small. Right. Uh, they're not the big, um, you know, ratchet straps. So right. I have two tubs that I stack one on top of the other here. As long as you have everything. You know fastened down but right like i said anything like that you know, anything like that can happen uh, eventually i do plan to put some kind of a you know a cover or a panel over this right because right now you're trying to make sure everything is laid out the way you want it in the whole sort of in the whole camper right, right? Mm -hmm. um, but you can see these batteries are super secured down in these he's got the track there or the angle of aluminum and then super stout battery bracket there with the uh, extra angle on top. Did your buddy weld that too for yeah. you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I I, really I bent the metal as best I could. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and then you got, looks like little rubber feet under there too. Yeah. So, yeah I put some rubber pads yeah. underneath there yeah. and it worked out pretty good. It's beautiful. So that's a custom made bracket. Yeah. Then. It's through bolted. It goes underneath the trailer and I've got, um, you know, I've got lock nuts underneath the trailer that, right. that hold those in place. So. That's beautiful. Okay. So, uh, just a couple other things to wrap this up. Uh, first of all, uh, the Victron battery, uh, monitor, very highly recommended. Uh, the model, by the way, is a BMV 712. Okay. Also, the charge controller is a Victron. But they come with Bluetooth built in, so you can look at what's going on in your phone. Right. So this is what I have going on now. So that's from my 
Victron battery monitor and it's telling me all the specs that I need to know. So as you're using your appliances, this is a great way actually, if you're uh, using them for the first time, the Victron uh, battery monitor up on your phone so you can see what's going on. Okay. So, um, you know, live in real time, you can see how many how many watts and amps that the uh, appliance is using. Okay. You always want to look at the, 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 the tags on them. It may not always draw the max uh, that it indicates on there. Have you ever seen it draw over the max or is it usually the max or below? Uh, it's usually the max or below. Okay. So for example, uh, my griddle will use almost 1800 watts all the way up until the point where it's preheated to like 325 degrees. Okay. Uh, the other appliances won't do that. Right. They'll cycle and you'll see that. Okay. So. And so the, the griddle goes up to 1800. What is the max on the tag? Uh, it's 1800. Okay, so it will get all the way up to it. Right, exactly. Okay, but not yeah. over. You're not seeing. And it with over. Uh, an inverter that uh, has a capacity of 2500 watts, you know, you're well within that. You, you know, at that point, just not to go over that. Okay. So, is there anything else you want to? Yeah, just one last thing. This is the uh, Blue Sea 120 volt uh, distribution panel. For me, it was well worth the investment. Again, I don't have a big gray box on here. Right. Um, it's on right now because uh, my inverter's on. It does have, uh, the, the, the main is a double pull breaker. Okay. And um, I got my circuits for, of course, a microwave air conditioner, the outlets I use the most. And then the bottom two are for future use. I don't have anything connected to those yet. I mentioned earlier, I used uh, hospital grade outlets. First one, if you're gonna chain outlets together, uh, this particular one is a GFCI. So it goes over to the uh, the 12 volt box and then um, the last one, the third one in that chain is uh, the outlets for outside. Guys, I can't thank Kevin enough and I know you probably feel the same way for not only uh, showing us his home on the road here that he created, but also for sharing his knowledge with us as well and what he's learned in this journey. Like he said, he's not you know a professional at any of this stuff but he is a guy that's got great ideas and likes to think through processes and had a journey in learning how to do all this. Thank, thank you, Kevin, for sharing that with us. Thanks for your time and uh, thank you everybody for watching. Yeah, I found it fascinating. If you found value in this video, please give us a thumbs up, subscribe, and leave a comment down below. Let's have a great discussion on this. Kevin will probably be looking at the comments from time to time. So if you have a question for Kevin, say Kevin at the beginning of it and ask your question. Kevin, why are your batteries blue? Whatever. The last thing actually is the, the cost of the trailer. Oh, yes. So all of this, you can see that everything that Kevin put in here was like a cut above. It was like premium stuff. It started with a premium chassis and trailer, premium boxes and great equipment, great appliances and all of that. So how much did this cost? I guess how much did the trailer cost when you got it delivered? And then how much after you completed all your upgrades? Okay, the answer to the $64,000 question is, uh, base price on the trailer uh, was about 12,000, a little less than that. Okay. Um, after I added windows, the uh, uh, Dometic awning, the RV door, and some of those other things, uh, it came out to be about 14,500. Okay. And then I've added another six into that. So I think if we call it 22, Okay. that's about where I'm at. Okay. Guys, I, I hope that we have relayed how solidly built and how you know just premium everything in here and the trailer is i don't know this trailer is not going anywhere for a long time no this 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 the stuff the construction of the trailer the system this will all last a long long time so quality investment that's it